Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com, your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Reach out to me personally for pricing. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we're discussing a scrambled series Rolex Oyster Perpetual Cosmograph Daytona, reference 116509 in 18 karat white gold. This watch measures 40 millimeters in diameter by 12.3 millimeters thick, by 47.5 millimeters lug to lug and end link to end link across the wrist. It is 51.8 millimeters with a spacing of 20 millimeters between the lugs. Now it is full white gold, quite solid and substantial. We'll throw it on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist where I can tell you that the full gold, full bracelet Daytona is nicely counterbalanced. So if you like to wear your watch loose, the bracelet and the clasp weigh about as much as the watch head so they don't have any tendency to porpoise roll or move around. Now you can see it's an easy watch to wear as the Daytona's 40 is smaller than some of the other 40s in the Rolex catalog, but only 12.3 millimeters thick it slides easily underneath a formal or dress cuff and you can see across the wrist I've got plenty of clearance the lugs are nowhere near the edge of my wrist and the same is self-evident down the barrel so I think you could wear this watch on a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference taking a quick look at the bracelet you can see this is a oyster bracelet three link design it is all solid center link solid end link milled clasp nicely made and because this is a flagship piece by Rolex you have polished centers you can see that removable links are fixed by screws we have the oyster clasp two different locks really it looks like just the clamshell, but there are two. There's a beacon to hook internally, and you can see there's this lip lock that latches. That's your first security. This is your second one. And then there's a little kerf underneath the crown so you can dig your nail in and pop it open. Note that the internals are polished because this, again, is an upscale flagship piece from Rolex. There's the Easy Link 5mm adjustment. You can snap it in, snap it out. It's good for fine tuning. It's the equivalent of adding or removing one sizable link. And then you can see that there are actually little divots drilled inside the clasp, three of them, with tracks leading down into the divots to help guide the link into place. So with your strap tool, you can change the anchoring point of the bracelet in the clasp, which means you have easy link, you have the divots, and then you have full-sized removable links to size this watch. You can see the case is in outstanding condition. It is all of high polish, relatively handsome. It's not the super case profile from some of the sports watches. This has more in common with the Yacht Master in terms of its actual profile. The lugs are beautifully tapered. The curves are compounded and handsome. The side's not sheer, and the lugs aren't squared off at their ends. You can see that the crown, it has uh, two small flanking links and then one large, or I should say two small flanking dots and one large center dot. That's how you know it's a trip block crown in gold. Small center, big flanking, that would be platinum. Now you can see the crown as well as the pushers are screwed down, 100 meters water resistant. The bezel is all of white gold to match the case. Case, bracelet, clasp, bezel, all of it made by Rolex. Rolex makes all of those components in-house and even has its own foundry where it smelts its own gold alloy and it uses what's known as gray gold in the industry. Gray gold is an 18 karat white gold alloy that does not need to be rhodium plated, that does not wear down and show a different color underneath. It's white all the way through. Advantage, gray gold. Now, the bezel, as you can see, is a tachymeter scale, and the scale is relatively high, starting at 400, so you can gauge the speed of things using the chronograph and that scale. You're going to gauge the speed of things moving relatively quickly. You can also see all the lacquer inside the wells intact. Nothing has rubbed off or faded, so the condition is excellent. The dial side, the highlight of the watch, it is diamond paved. It's made of white gold, and then the diamonds are set by hand. So when you see gem set Rolex watches, you're looking at the last truly handmade and hand finished Rolex watches because everything else short of service has been industrialized. Lots of nice details here. Rolex uses an optical scanner to make sure that all of the diamonds are equal in color, carats, and clarity, so there's no gradient in size or shading across the dial. We have white gold hands, white gold crown, white gold Rolex nameplate, and of course, white gold Arabic numerals radially arrayed. We have sunken registers with lovely sunburst centers. You can see that's an unusual and extravagant feature. And then, of course, we have polished chapter rings for each of the registers inside the case. Rolex manufactured caliber 4130 with two features I love on a chronograph. A column wheel for crisp and sharp actuation feel and sound. And then a vertical clutch so there's no stagger or jump to the chronograph second hand when it starts. And because of the vertical clutch, which includes no play in its engagement, you can leave the chronograph running with no additional wear and tear. 
automatic winding, bi-directional action, 72 hour power reserve, 4 hertz beat rate, 44 joules. It does have stop seconds. It was the first Rolex movement, the 4130 back in 2000. She was a winding bearing system rather than the previous jeweled staff, and that makes it more shock tolerant. It's adjusted in six positions and cased up at the factory and guaranteed to run no worse than minus two plus two seconds per day, hence the term superlative chronometer. But also worth mentioning, the watch still receives the COSC chronometer certification. And of course, it features a full balance bridge with a free sprung balance for shock tolerance and a handmade overcoil hairspring so that the hairspring breathes concentrically in any position, helping the watch to keep even time in any position. Finally, the hairspring's made of a niobium zirconium alloy known as Parachrom Blue that makes this watch highly anti-magnetic. And before we go, my favorite detail, if you've ever complained that Rolex watches have a book printed on their dial, this one has very spare printing indeed. And I should mention, this is simply the best way to feature gems on a men's watch. In general, I like my gems inside the watch, not outside the watch. And from a distance, this actually just looks like a chiseled white gold dial, so it's discreet about its bling. Reach out to Team Also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.